Hey guys, welcome to Code Decode. Today in this video, we are going to cover some very important programming Java interview question that is to find duplicate elements or characters in a string in three different ways and in three different time and space complexities. So please watch this with me till end because we never know in which particular way interviewer will ask you this particular interview question. Please let us know in the comment section which all questions you have faced in an interview and we will create a video on that also. Please like, share and subscribe to support us and we are setting a like target of 500 likes. So let's get started. So there is a very first way that is using for loop. So let's get started. So I'll create a method say find duplicates using for and my string will be code space decode simple string. Now we'll create this method for us which is going to return me a list of all those characters which are duplicate. Now since you can see E is repeated three times we don't want that any of the character which is repeated should be repeated more than twice or thrice in a list. So rather than taking a list, we are going to take a set. So we are going to take a set of characters, which is going to be returned to us. And we are going to at the end print it. Now here, our string is code decode. Okay. Now what we can do is, what the first thing comes to our mind is, take this first element and compare with everyone. If it is repeated, add it to a set. So create a set. Name this duplicates. Now you can take it as a hash set. If interviewer doesn't put you any kind of restriction, that if C is coming first, it should come first in your final set or list. So if, if there is no restriction of the order of encountering these particular elements, then you can use hash set. If they put in condition that please create the set in the order of insertion only or the order of encountering of these characters, then you can use linked hash set. So you can ask the interviewer, does he need the elements in order of encountering or it can be in any ways. Currently, I'm going to take in the order of encounter. So if C is getting repeated twice, the linked head set will have C coming first. So I've created my set now. Now what is the logic behind finding a duplicate? So I'll pick the first one and check whether it is repeated. If it is repeated, add it. Then I'll pick the second one and then I'll try to find out whether this is also repeated. And similarly, I'll go on and finding the elements. So I'll put a for loop now where I will go from 0 to length of string. I'll name my string as name. So I less than name dot length that is will going to cover each and every element here so that nobody is left and I plus plus. Now your I counter will be at C while your J counter will go from I plus 1 to end. Checking is C equal to O? No. If C equal to D? No. C equals to C? Yes. So at the seventh index it should be equal. We'll create another for loop where my int j will go from i plus 1 and where it should stop it should stop as name dot length or even you can reduce i from there because it will be less than 1. That is for performance purpose. Now you will check whether this ith index is equal to jth index. So if condition name dot caret. So caret is a method which returns you character at a given index. So currently my index is coming as i and j. So I'll compare both the characters at ith index and jth index. And are they equal? If they are equal, add it to my duplicate set. Any of them, i or j doesn't matter because it, the condition will be fulfilled only when both are equal. So when my i is is 0 my character at 0 is going to be C and when J is 7 my character is again going to be C. So at this point of time my duplicates will have C added to it and at the end when everything is ended I'm going to return my duplicate and we're going to print it here. So let's debug it and see whether at line when J is equals to 7 does my duplicate come here. So this should be equal and the, the debugger should come here when i is 0 and j is 7. So yes, when i is equals to 0, then value is c. And when j equals to 7, that means 8th character, that is c. So when that is the case, the name at character of j should be c and it will be added to my duplicates. Let's see what happens next. So next time my i is 1, that is o and this should be 8. So j should be 8. Yes. And then next O will be added and so on. And this is the set of those characters which are repeated. So this is a very simple way of adding duplicates. But the problem is though your code seems so quick, so neat and clean and such a small code. If you can see there are just two for loops and hence the for loop first will have order of complexity of n and again inside for loop the two for loops will increase 
the complexity to order of n square. So the time complexity of this method is order of n square, which is the worst time complexity you can ever write in your code in life. Now, since this is the worst complexity of order of n square, the interview will say that, okay, this is this code is going to work for me, but the complexity is very bad, order of n square. Now you have to work upon it and make the complexity reduced from order of n square to order of n at least. So what you need to do is when you have four inside four, the complexity increases to n square. So now your task is to reduce these two fours into two different fours. So let's focus on that now. Let's create another method. In this method, what we're going to do is we're going to put one for loop where we're going to save the frequency of each character into an array. And then in the next for loop, we are going to iterate the array and save the characters whose count is greater than one into duplicates. So what for sure we need is a duplicate list or set which we are going to return. So let's first create that. Now we have the string. What we are going to do is we are going to create an array. We are going to create an int array for characters of size equals to 256, which is the size of care in Java. Size of care is 256 bytes. So we're going to create an integer which is going to have the count of each element repeated in our string in this. By default, each of these values of 256 bytes will be initialized with zero. So let's see the logic first. So what we have created is we have created an array of size 256. So this is our array initialized with 0, 0, 0 and so on till 255. At some number 97, we have an ASCII for A, small a. At 99, we have ASCII for C. So I'll show this ASCII table to you. So ASCII character for A is 97. ASCII value for B is 98. ASCII value for C is 99. So what we are creating is, we are creating a simple array of bytes. Each byte will contain 0 as initial value. As soon as your uh, code comes, the first encountered value is C. At C, we are going to remove this 0 and we are going to do 0 plus 1, that is 1. Then when again decode comes, again C comes here, we are going to increment this to 2. And in this way, we are going to increment, keep on incrementing the value at the int array as we encounter that alphabet in a string. So let's write the code for it now. So we have created this array of size 256. Now we, we what we have to do is we have to reduce these two for loops. So what we need is first for loop where my int i will go from 0 to length of my name and I'm going to find name dot caret i. Now that caret i is going to be c for the first one. For the first one is going to be c. So when you try to convert this character into int value, it is going to return you 99. So at array of 99, I'll increment the value of array of caret i plus 1. So let me try and debug this for you if this works for us first. If this much is working, we'll go ahead with our logic. So initially, every number is initiated with a 0. And whenever you encounter a character dot caret i, which is nothing but c, and the ASCII value for c is 99. So at 99 place, it's going to increment from 0 to 1. So what you see here at 99 is going to be incremented from 0 to 1. So let me do F6. And now let's see whether my 99 is incremented to 1. Yes. So my 99th value is incremented by 1. In this way, as soon as you come at 7th iteration, where i equals to 7, your 99th value will become 2. So my i is 7. And with F6, my 99th value should become 2. So my 99th value becomes 2. In the meanwhile, e has also been repeated. So what is ASCII value for e? That is 101. So by 7th, that is by this, how many times e has been repeated? 2. So my 101 should also have 2. So let's go into 100 to 199 and let's see at 101, the value is 2. C is also repeated, D is also repeated and E is also repeated twice. So here C is repeated twice, D is also repeated twice and E is also repeated twice. By the end of this, 
E should be 3. And what is ASCII for E? 101. So when we end this, 101 should have E. That is 3. So our D is also repeated thrice. Here, here and here. And E is also repeated thrice. So our logic is working fine and our array is ready. Now next for loop will go from i equals to 0 till i less than 256 and i plus plus. Because now we have to iterate over our array. That is array of our care. And the size of array for care is 256. So we'll iterate over with 256 and check if any value at i is greater than 1. That means that particular element is repeated. If that is repeated, add that particular to, I'll stop it. So add that to our duplicates array. Now it says cast it. So I'm going to cast my i to a character array. So, so suppose at uh, if my i comes as 99, the 99 will be converted to character and the 99 for character is C. So my duplicates will have C. So this is how you map between your array of integers having characters as 0 to 256 and this is how you get back your character by typecasting your integer value to character again. So this is the table which we use for casting from character to integer and integer to character. And hence, at the end, we are going to return duplicates. We are going to return a set of characters and let's see if this works. Awesome, this works for us. But there is one problem if you can see. If I print both of them together, you can see a problem. The problem is that this was the order of encounter of these elements. But they, this is not the order of encountering of these elements. Why? Because we have created an array and we are iterating over the array in the second loop. So on in this array from 0 to 256, first what will come is C, then will come as D and then E and not in the order of insertion in the name or order of encountering in the string name. So that is why you will always have it in ascending order. So great. What we were able to achieve here is we have reduced our time complexity from order of n square because of two for loops, inner for loop and outer for loop to two simple for loops which are not inside each other. So this for loop will have order of n. This for loop is also going to have the time complexity of order of n. So the total complexity by this line becomes order of 2n which is as good as order of n only and hence you have successfully reduced your complexity from order of n square to order of n. With for loops you, ha you had time complexity of order of n square. With this you have successfully reduced time complexity to order of n that is the length of string passed. So time complexity is fine but your space complexity is a problem now. Why? Because if you can see while debugging, you had an array of size 256 and just 5 or 4 of these characters or bytes are used. Rest all are 0, rest all are wasted. So if I remove 4 or 5 out of it, 250 of your byte memories are wasted in this particular program. So this is a very bad space complexity program. So what we will do is now we will try to reduce space as well as time complexity and the way to do is is using maps. So we'll create one more method. Here my time complexity was order of n but the space complexity was very large 256 where most of the bytes are wasted. So now we are going to create another method using maps. Now we know what we need. We need a linked hash set. Now we have to use map. So whenever there is a situation that you have two for loops and you have to reduce it to one single for loop, always try to create a key value pair and store the values that you want to evaluate here in a value of that particular key. So the first iteration becomes your key and second iteration try to make operations that is count or something as the value in that particular map so that you can reduce your Two for loop and single for loop. So we need a map here. So we'll create a hash map. And the type will be, our key will be characters. And value will be count. So count will be an integer. Primitive will not work. So integer wrapper class. And it's going to have count map. I'm going to take a hash map only now. And now I'll reduce our code, which was from two for loops to single for loop. Now in this for loop, I have to write a logic to fill this map 
with key value pair where key is this C O D E space. These are going to be my keys and value is how many times C is repeated. So for C it should be two, for D it should be three, for E also it should be three. So basically the frequency. So let's put a condition if my count map dot contains key as how will you take C out of your string? Caret method will do that for you. So name dot caret i. If it contains, then you need to put some logic. And if it doesn't contain, so currently. I have empty map. So currently it will not contain any key. So if it doesn't contain C because my map is empty right now, I should put to my map. So simple count map dot put. And what should be my character? Character you you have to find it from your string dot caret i. And initially the count will be one because it has repeated once. So for C for the first time, I'm going to put it here again for O. Again, since my map doesn't contain anything, so currently I had only C. Now when O comes, map doesn't contains O. So again, I have to put it similarly for D, E and space. Now when D comes again, here D is already present in my map. So my map contains the key. I don't have to put it again. Otherwise, it will replace it. What I have to do is I have to increment its count and how will I do that? I have to put my character D but the value should not be 1. The value should be incremented. So first get it and increment it. How will you get it? So count map dot get and key will be name dot caret type and when you get it after getting increment it with 1. So now here with D, D comma 2 will be my key value pair. Similarly with E, E comma 2 will be my pair and with the end D and E will become 3. So this is how you're going to create your map. If you don't have it, put it simple with just one because it is first time encountered. The frequency is only one. If you encounter it again, then don't directly put it. Increment value and again keep the key as same. If the key is same, map is going to override it. So initially where D was equals to 1 here, it is going to override it to 2 and then it is again going to override with 3. This will happen only and only when you keep the key as name dot caret that is C or D or E, whatever character you encounter in a string. So I will debug it for you once. Okay, initially my map is empty. Then C comes as 1, O comes as 1, E comes as 1. Now this is a space which is encountered 1. But again, when D comes, it becomes 2. And by the end of it, my count map says space has come only one time. C has come twice. D and E has come thrice and O has twice again. So this is the perfect map that is expected out of us. Now, now we have to iterate and find all those characters whose value is greater than 1 and return it in duplicates. So a map contains entry object, right? So map dot entry character comma integer. Each map has the entry set and entry set returns you an entry, which is the inner class of map, which is carrying your key value pair. So if your entry object dot get value, if it is greater than one, wrap it in a if condition. That means that particular element is repeated more than once. That means it is duplicate. You have to add it to your duplicate set. And what you have to add it is entry dot get key. That character is going to be added. And now at the end, you will just return it. Let's run this. Great. C D E O. So this is how we have reduced our complexity to order of n login because map.put also takes login time. So order of login here and order of n here. So your worst complexity becomes order of n login. But your space complexity is reduced to only the length of string input. That is order of k. That is size of your map. So that is how you have reduced not only the space complexity, but also time complexity from order of n square. So that was all about how do you find duplicate elements in a string. Thank you.